So she's basically, you know, 3D model, so we can zoom around, look at her. And she can, she can see in here, so she's, I do her lap. So you give her a fright like that. And this is, you can see my face here, so you can see what she's looking at. And, yeah, and if, hey, sweetheart, smile. Hey, it's okay. Hey, hey. Now, she's not copying my expression. She's actually responding to me. I'm basically setting off her feel-good chemicals. Now, what I'm going to do is a bit cool. I'm going to abandon her, so I'm going to... Uh, sort of hide over here, and this is basically, she's going to emergently start trying to look for me, and she's probably going to get distressed. And if you look where the mouse is over here, if you look for a red line, which will be the amount of cortisol, and that's going to start building up. It's okay. Hey, sweetheart, it's okay. It's okay. Hey, hey, she's listening to my tone of voice. Hey, it's okay. Good girl, yeah, very good. So we look different sort of levels here, so we've got oxytocin and all kinds of things. Thank you. Now, because... <laughs> Thank you. Now, so she's also learning in real time. So what we're going to do now is basically like Pavlovian learning. So I'm going to do a... Can you hear the bell? That's like a conditioned stimulus. doesn't mean anything. Hey, sweetheart, you like the bell. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay, now, I might take a little bit. Hey, sweetheart, you like the bell. Yes, you do. Now, do the bell by itself. There we go. So that's making her happy. She's literally sort of associated this sort of state with how it's going. Now, all of her animation is created live by neural networks. And so if we basically, what I'm going to do now is remove her face so you can see what's actually driving it. Now, what you're actually looking at now is what we've done is we've taken the neural networks driving a face and put them on the neuroanatomy. So this is a sort of live 3D brain. I'm moving around like this. You'll see the ocular motor nuclei, which are controlling the eye movements, firing. And we can spin it around and look at different parts. So here we see the visual cortex here. And now let's remove the cortex and zoom into the brain stem. So this area of the brain here is called the superior colliculus, which basically maps the world onto your body. But as you see, activity on this area is basically driving the nuclei, driving the eye movements. So we come out of here, and now it's probably a bit hard to see in this, but where the mouse is, is part on the cortex, and it's coming down into the brain, and this is a thalmocortical loop. And what happens is if you want to move, basically activity builds up with positive feedback. So if I'm going to now basically bump up the amount of dopamine in the circuit, and the loop starts heating up. So now what happens when you get too much of this is everything wants to move at once, and that's Huntington's disease. Now if we drop the amount of dopamine, you can see this green sort of um, circuit here. I drop it down. I'm now killing off that area, and this is Parkinson's disease. The brain wants to move the body, but the body can't move. So now we come out of the face again, and because of the way in the Lego system we can map everything, we can look at the clinical markers of this. So if you watch your eyes, I'm just going to bump up the amount of dopamine. Let's see. Sure, let's click on that a bit more. Let's drop it down. Oh, yeah, she's really um, kind of stoned at the moment, actually. <laughs> but basically, so now what we're going to do is now we're going to jump to another view, and we've got her little first words book here. So uh, I'm going to show her something to look at, and here we go. Okay, sweetheart, hey, what's this? What's this? What's that? Good girl. Okay, let's show her something else. Let's see. Okay, hey, sweetheart, what's this? I'm getting her attention. What's this? What is this? What does that say? Sheep. Good girl. OK, now I'm going to show you some things which could take too long to, to basically train on, on live on stage. So here we go. And this is now what she's doing now is she's basically making motions, and I'm copying here. So this is like a caregiver copying the child's reactions. Over time, she starts to associate my reactions with her own expressions. So. We do this more and more, and then now I make an expression, she's copying me, she's learnt that. But you see now she's responding with a smile because I'm praising her, but she's also doing a cognitively driven expression as well as a basically yes. a lower motor pathway expression. Now if we take her motor cortex and we connect it to the bat in the game Pong, she doesn't know about this, we've just connected the bat in the game Pong and presented it to her visual field, and she gets a reward every time she hits it. 
she starts basically learning to control the bat. So what you'll see here is after a while, and this is kind of like how a baby learns by just flailing its arms around and it hits something and it kind of notices that. So that's basically, and now I'll just jump to the next.